Hi guys. In my last video, I have used this uh, so-called socket tester, or circuit tester, to show you how dangerous it is to use a so-called Shuko plug, European class one appliance plug, here on the Thai outlets. And today we are going to use this uh, device here on my off-grid system and I will show you how you can see if your off-grid inverter is properly grounded and neutral to ground bonded, right, if everything is working there well. So if you're interested to see that, please bear with me. We will talk about this in a moment in my power room. But first of all, let me tell you a few more things to neutral to ground bonding. Again, I have seen uh, videos on YouTube where this topic is coming up uh, now and then. And it is also always disturbing me uh, somehow. Neutral to ground bonding is a procedure coming with the earthing system. Earthing systems, there are five standard earthing systems available. All of these are internationally standardized and they are not used like it would come to somebody's mind, right? You have the names TN, TT, etc., IT, and this stands for how a system is grounded at the generator, right? So what is a generator? It can be the grid transformer, it can be a solar inverter, it can be a gasoline generator, whatever. And TN stands for the procedure how to combine ground, which is physical. You put a grounding rod at your point of source of power and how this is then connected to the active side which is neutral in this case because you don't want to connect ground to the active life of course and then this is brought to a user in a very standardized system it can be TNC it can be TNS it can be TNCS and all these names do have a reason why this is called like that. So when we are using let's say the TNC system we bring the neutral and the earth combined to a power user this ends up as a combined conductor in your load center and there it needs to be separated that's why it's called then the TNCS system once the separation is done then at that point there might be a, also an auxiliary grounding point another grounding rod and there at your load center if it's not already done at the power source at the transformer for example or at your off-grid inverter then there will be a neutral to ground bond there and this is very systematic this is done before your distribution before any circuit breaker before any protective device like an RCD or GFCI etc and that is also the single only point in your electrical distribution where neutral to ground bond can be done at your load panel or just next to your power source of course not somewhere downstream at the appliance there is no more ground bond neutral to ground bond at the later point than your uh, main distribution board. And this you have to understand, this has several reasons. You can first of all not 
bond behind a RCD or behind a GFCI, it would trip that device immediately and you, you cannot connect a grid interactive generator like a solar generator, something like that, downstreams behind your neutral to ground bonding and bond again somewhere there. This is creating bypasses all over the place and this can destroy your equipment. But so neutral to ground bonding is nothing random, it is very systematically done and if somebody is doing it at a place where it's not supposed to be done, this can work in an individual setup but it might not work at other places. But okay, it's enough for that. Let's look how this small tester here can show us if everything is correct wired in your off-grid system. So here we are in my power room. This is my off-grid inverter. This is my load center behind the off-grid inverter. So this is a sort of essential load panel. What is on this? We only have my garden lighting, then the pool pump is running on this and yeah, there is one circuit. Here we have an RCD, a breaker and a European outlet. And on this uh, circuit I have my chest freezer, so my so-called doomsday freezer and yeah, something to plug in if it's necessary to let's say charge up some devices if the grid is down etc. So let's see what we can test here and then I will open this we will remove the neutral to ground bond and then we will again check what our tester will show us and what it will do when we press the test button. Okay let's do this. I have my socket tester here plug it into the socket and what does it show me? So this, the display is reading our voltage 238 so this meter is showing a little bit high because we should have more or less exactly 230 volts here here it's showing a little bit less the other one so this is just the cheap meters and then we have here also a neutral to earth voltage which is now dashed out so and we have three LEDs. First one is lit, the other one off, then the last one is lit again and this is telling life neutral reverse. So what that means life and neutral is reversed. This tester is internally set up for the life and the neutral on some certain way and my socket is set up also life neutral a certain way and it isn't, does not match. So what we are going to do is take it out, turn it over and yeah, now we have first and second one is lit and the other one is off and this is now telling us correct. And because it's correct, you can see now the display turned to be green and now we also have a neutral to earth voltage here and it is showing zero sometime and sometime one volt. So this that is good. So what we do have now here is we have a test button for an RCD. So this uh, device is set for a, it's telling us here the value 37 milliamps leakage current and this will trip our or this should trip our 30 milliamp uh, RCD here. If you buy this device for the US American standard, so with the American plug, it will be a GFCI tester. So instead of 37 milliamps, it will give you six or seven milliamps there because the GFCIs, they are five milliamp leakage current. Okay, here we have our RCD and our socket tester test button. Let's press it and the RCD tripped, the socket is out of power and the tester went dark. Ok, 
Okay, so this uh, load center is not set up as a typical consumer unit. I have here live on the bus bar and neutral on another bus bar. This is a pure distribution setup. So this is something nobody else than me should open. And the ground is connected from device to device where it is needed. So here, this is our neutral to ground bond. By removing that bond, now the ground side is still all of course connected to our grounding rod which is just behind me here behind this wall and on this grounding rod on this pe system here also the inverter is still connected now on the grounding terminal so everything connected to my green grounding wire is still connected physically to the earth so now we are going to see what the tester will actually say to this situation. Does he tell us if ground is present or will he already say open ground? So let's check that. Okay, I take my tester. We need to plug it in upside down. But first of all, I also want to put my RCD back on. And look at that. So we have still lit and lit and off and this is telling us correct. So the tester here is actually seeing a ground connection. Okay, let's see this from the close up here. But you can see now already our life to neutral. The voltage is not stable anymore and we have a neutral to earth voltage here also so this was what i showed you why we need to bond neutral to earth you see all these voltages are going up and down and yeah because we have a floating neutral now on the inverter and here you can see the third led it depends on the difference, voltage difference from neutral to earth. When the voltage goes up, this LED, you see, up from 10 volts up, it starts to be uh, shining also. Uh, what would that mean? Three red, what would that mean? That means live ground reverse missing ground. So the tester actually gives you a few options to this case so it could be missing ground it could be also live and ground reversed so interesting situation and now i'm really curious what happens when we press the test button so will the rcd actually get a leakage information even when the active neutral is not bonded to our ground. So will it get information somewhere uh, coming from the grounding rod and going back to the inverter via the grounding terminal, etc. So we can only find it out if we test. So let's test the button here and see what happens. Oh, I got another red light and nothing is happening. So you can see the test failed. The RCD could not detect any leakage and it did not strip. Oh, that was the test. We have checked up if our off-grid system is set up correctly. And actually I found the test very interesting because I did not think that the tester will also see some sort of gray area where it actually can physically detect present ground but then also say but something is here still not correct right but you can see this easily on the indication 
between the ground and neutral voltage, etc. So very, very helpful. And I highly recommend you to get something like this. I'm not member in any affiliate program or anything. You will find this in your most preferred online store anyway. Just important to say there is three versions of this. European plug, US plug and Australian plug. So European and Australian is anywhere nothing to do wrong. But for countries which use like here in Thailand actually the US, the US plug with the grounding pin, right? If you would buy a US version, you would actually buy a wrong device because you cannot make your RCD trip because 230 volt system uses RCDs, US uses GFCIs and all these devices with the US plug will have a GFCI test instead of the RCD test. So if, if you buy something like this, also here in Thailand, the seller will actually sell you a device with a GFCI test and this will probably not work because that device is set with such a low leakage current that it will not trip your RCD. Okay, so I hope you also found it interesting what you saw today. So please comment, like the video, subscribe to the channel and I see you next time.